Um, he gets sexually harassed by, some, by uh, someone who he ultimately gets into an affair with and yeah. then falls in love with the daughter. I yeah. don't know. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today we're going to be making sense of life through The Graduate. Mm -hmm. Yes, young Dustin Hoffman. It was an experimental time that that movie <laughs> came out. But yeah, like the main main premise, right, is that young graduate just finishes college and that, you know, understandably when you're that young still, 20, 21, don't really know what to do next. Even if you have everyone, you know, family and friends coming by and suggesting you should get into this industry or trust me, this is the way to go. You know, it's going to yeah. be big. You know, you can have all these people giving you suggestions. Plastics. Plastics. Yeah, exactly. He's like, <laughs> one word for you, plastic. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll, I'll remember that. You know, it doesn't mean anything. His family wanting to, well, they, they, I'm trying to think of the word, but they drag him around uh, as if he's not really a person. A lot of times they show him they, off. Yeah. They, they live vicariously through his achievements, right? He was a successful track athlete. He got and some awards. Got some awards. He's good at stuff. And so they can boast about it. Mm -hmm. But then uh, he obviously feels dehumanized by a lot of that. He just wants quiet time. He wants to reflect. He's a little bit disoriented. You mm -hmm. know, it's he's done with, with university and now he has to be an adult, basically. Mm -hmm. And those things are really hard. Uh, I, I got a sense also from that movie, which I think is a, happens a lot at times with families, where... They want him to know what he has wants to do now. It's like, okay, so, you know, yeah, I take a couple of weeks in the summer, but now get off your butt, you know? But they don't do anything besides that. They just say, get off your butt. Okay, and do what? You know, yeah. any guidance, any suggestions, any starting point? Yeah. Not, none of that. The parents are problematic to me for the fact that they just keep pushing for him to make moves and move mm. forward with his life without actually sitting down yeah. to figure out what's going on with him. Yeah. And then they, they also keep pushing him to potentially start a relationship with their friend's daughter. Again, mm -hmm. to kind of, I don't know, keep it all in the family, right? Wouldn't it be great if you guys could get together too? Then another reason to hang out with their friends. Yeah. And for the longest time, you know, because no one likes to be forced match made like that. When he's like, I don't even, we don't know each other. It's weird. Stop being weird. Stop forcing things so much. Well, oddly, funnily enough, they end up actually really getting along, and then yeah. so maybe okay. In that case, I guess they were right. But it's tricky because at the end of the day, if you are a close family, yeah, which I don't know about this family if they are close to per se, but ideally, whoever you're dating, you can bring home to mm -hmm. your parents, and they will get along with them. And also, you bring home people home to your parents to for the parents to suss mm -hmm. to suss them out, and because they care about you and don't want you to be taken advantage of, or. Yeah find yourself in a bad um, relationship. So obviously I think it does make sense for parents if they if they have a friend whose daughter is a good girl or if they have a friend whose son is a good guy and they think that the, this might be a good match. And it obviously makes it easy because then you don't have to do the whole um, thing of meeting new in-laws, right? Yeah. So in that way, it does make sense, of course. And I think every single parent would take advantage of that. But the guy is very resistant to it. And the mom is like, well, you know what? I'm just going to have to throw a party <laughs> yeah. then and invite the entire family yeah. over if you don't want to take her out. Yeah. That is incredibly invasive. Yeah. yeah. The kind of parents that just will just do whatever they want and yeah. never... You know, the kid will never feel listened to or validated for. Like, you know, yeah. well, we're just going to do that anyways if they didn't even ask him. And, you know, I was thinking, I think probably my, my favorite part of the movie is the scene where so he finally gives in, takes out the daughter. And at first he's kind of trying to act kind of dickish because he kind of just wants it to be over quickly. And then he'd be like, hey, I did it. Okay, you happy now? You know, and then she gets upset, understandably. And then he's not actually that kind of guy. He feels bad. And then he starts to be honest with her and opens up, right? And he talks about... You know, first of all, he's like, I always felt like I kind of just had to act a certain way around people. You just had to just be, you know, it's like kind of like the world makes you have, feel like you have to have your guard up and be mean. And, and also he's like, yeah, people also just seem to know what to do. And he's like, I just always never really, I don't know, like I just like, we're, how do people figure this stuff out? You I know? definitely think that um, Mrs. Robinson is way more in the wrong. He's a kid, like she's yeah. an older woman yeah. and he's still young and yeah. she knows that she can manipulate yeah. At the end of the day, she's, he is afraid mm -hmm. of doing this because, well, it's the parent's friend yeah. and she's older. What are my yeah. parents going to think? All of these things. Yeah. So he doesn't want to. Yeah. And so I believe that she pushes him into it. Right. It's that, that thing where people in authority take advantage of that authority because they yeah. understand. Because yeah. she is an older lady yeah. and she's, you know, he, he considers her 
he still tries to be respectful. Yeah. Even when someone you know, like your um, your father's friend, and yeah. that's why people like that, like family friends mm. and who are older, they can more easily t- um, take advantage yeah. or even yeah. sexually harass yeah. pe- kids. Yeah, like she's saying, she's like, I've known you since you were a kid. Yeah, I think as mm. all of us were watching this, it, they presented it in a way where you kind of forget that Mrs. Robinson yeah. is in a relationship. Yeah. And, and then it's, you just kind of start settling into, oh, mm-hmm. they're together, they're going to go and do yeah. that, even though we know it's bad. Yeah. And then it's, and in that way, you also start to, to not really think of how bad this relationship is. Really, like, I'm also just reflecting on it right now because after we watched the movie we were like ah uh, you know let's not talk about it let's yeah. talk about it right then so yeah. that it's you know that what we talk about is fresh to both of us i am reflecting on how people in authority figures in a th- positions of authority and it, this is not like a leadership or, or anything like that but it's just literally your your friend's yeah. dad your friend's mom yeah these people know that you have a certain level of respect the respect for them and they take advantage of that respect knowing that you're not gonna because sometimes you kind of feel bad to say oh no please don't yeah, do that you know yeah. for whatever reason it be, just because that you've you've grown up with these people yeah. and you've known them for a long time and you you want to give them that kind of respect yeah. so even though you know that they're doing something wrong it's really hard for you to yeah. call them out and they are aware these people yeah. who do this and that's why a lot of people that do get sexually harassed, it's a lot of times from people they yeah. know, and it's why it's also very hard to go to court and prove it because you find yourself in this position where I couldn't say no to Mr. Mrs. Yeah. Robinson, but it was sexual harassment mm-hmm. from the very beginning. Yeah. That's how it started off. Yeah, He is trying to get out of there yeah. and she's re- preventing him yeah. from getting yeah. out, literally Using in a lot in of, the house. Yeah, guilt and, and a lot of controlling yeah, bring language it up. and tactics. Bring the, bring the bag up and, to and the he's door. Like, Don't no, play yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, okay, fine. Put it in my daughter's room. And then he goes <laughs> then to the daughter. Closes, and then she, locks the door. And now she's naked. That is pure yep. and utter sexual harassment. Yep. Yep. If that were a guy and yep. she were a woman, exactly. yeah. every single person who watched that movie would yep. be like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of men, for example, who don't, who aren't able to come out because of experiences of sexual harassment mm-hmm. because of how, well, oh no, it's going to emasculate him. People will find him to be, okay, but you're too soft. You got, right. you got harassed by a woman. Right. But realistically, this was a sexual harassment story. This whole relationship that was packaged in this yeah. way that made us feel like almost endeared to yeah. the relationship. Yeah. You realize they start like, this to, is they actually start to a talk and get situation. to know each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the whole time, yeah. Then you have to remember that exactly. I think that that kind of brings it back to how messed up the situation was. Yeah. When he actually, which you know, it's a lot healthier for her him to actually develop a relationship with the daughter. Wow, this movie is insane. Can you imagine? Like, it's, yeah. it was insane because it just started as, oh, this guy yeah. is doing this, you know, little thing with Mrs. Robinson. But yeah. Mrs. Robinson then accuses this guy of rape. Yeah. It's so interesting because all of these things that happen, they're just sprinkled into the movie like nothing is, like, like it's not uh, yeah. as huge a deal. I'm not sure if they did that on purpose because he just, we find out that the, the mother set, accused him of rape just like in one tiny little scene yeah, yeah and then it's not talked about ever again yeah and yeah. i'm like this is huge yeah the daughter believes him yeah. ultimately yeah realizes that the mom is lying yeah even though that's also not actually talked about they never yeah. actually sit down and discuss this yeah um the movie, in detail the movie goes off the rails a little bit i think just in terms of after she gets upset with him then she goes with this other guy and then they end up about to get married and then you know the rest of the movie is him trying to f- find out yeah. find where they're getting married and then to stop the wedding or to object and then you know she yeah. ends up still i guess somewhere feeling like he was innocent or that it was you know i mean yeah. growing up she probably knew her mother was manipulative who knows but you know in the end yeah she goes with him um so yeah some of those things they don't really address in the way you'd expect them to which but, i wonder if it's because of the time right you know because i think if you had a movie like that right now yeah i I don't know if they would have included the rape allegation in there right. unless they were going to expound on it further. Right. It's it's really huge mm-hmm. because those kinds of things do happen. People yeah. have been accused of rape and it's it's such a disappointing thing. It's disappointing not just for the people who are affected, like the people who are held accountable for things that they didn't do, yeah. but it is also such a huge disservice to people who actually do exactly. yeah. get um, sexually harassed or get raped. Yeah. 
it, it makes it even harder, I believe, yeah. to, for example, as a woman, if you're approaching, if you're trying to seek justice for rape, mm -hmm. it makes it even harder when there are all of these other, when, when women... When people can also falsely... Yeah, yeah, it just makes it so much harder. And And that is the tricky thing, I guess, that is hard to get around, is that there will always be people that uh, are out to, to manipulate and to affect things for their own selfish gain, so then they know, okay, well, you know, I can just say this thing, which means nothing to me. It's a huge accusation or whatever, but it yeah. means nothing to me. And this no is across the board. This, is, this could be yeah. anything. This could be, again, like accusing someone of, of anything. Yeah, murder, rape, murder, you name yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll say this. If you don't, if you don't do this, I am going to ABC. I really don't think that these conversations were being had at that time. And of course, obviously they weren't have being ha being had to the magnitude that they that they mm -hmm. are now because women yeah. really weren't talking so much it's unfortunate as well that i think we are definitely still behind in terms of men themselves getting raped mm -hmm. and get men getting raped and men getting sexually harassed because yeah. These things happen to them too, but we're still very much behind on that. I think maybe it's because sex is still such a taboo thing for people to talk about and those kinds of dynamics, I guess. I don't know. Like why um, men's experiences with sexual yeah, harassment? Yeah, yeah, to talk about, for, for men to talk about things like that. It was a big thing for Terry Crews to come out being sexually harassed by another guy in this yeah. case, but, you know, that was a really hard thing for him to bring up. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a, it's obviously a lot of societal yardsticks in, at play here. Mm -hmm. A man is not is supposed to be strong enough not to be sexually harassed. Yeah. And if you are being, the idea of you being a victim of sexual harassment then effeminizes you. And right. you don't want that, right? right? So you're not going to say anything. It makes you a victim. It makes you a victim. You, a victim. you don't, yeah, yeah men. It, it, it's not to say that men don't want to be a victim, but it's just the world that we live in. If yeah. you are seen to be a victim, then you're weak. You're not worthy to be called a man. But it was just interesting, this yeah. movie, I think, it showed all of those complexities of manipulation and people using power, using their power to put someone else in a weaker position, mm. in a detrimental position for their own personal gains, even, yeah. you know, whatever those gains are, yeah. even though they're not justifiable. So yeah. um, there was a lot of yeah, yeah I, which I really don't know if the people in, you know, who made that movie were even thinking of that. It's hard to say. I think there is there is definitely some some themes there. But yeah, because it's it's not a movie where you can, you can say, ah, that is the theme of the movie. It's definitely like, not, yeah. Like, for instance, Kramer versus Kramer, I think you can fairly safely say, this is a movie trying to show, I guess it was like, of this, but instead of uh, where women generally get custody of the kid because it's assumed that they'd be a better parent, yeah. Kramer versus Kramer, the whole theme, main theme of the movie is that no, sometimes the, the father can actually be the better, the better parent, parent in this yeah. case. So with that movie, it's very clear. I think that is like, it, it, you know, that's clearly the central theme. With this, I think it was something that was there and yeah. intentionally there, but it wasn't really kind of like what everything was, you know, gravitating towards, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting movie because when I look at it, so many things did happen, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, what was the movie about? Mm -hmm. Could it have just have been about a guy who's done with school? I mean, it is a graduate, so he's yeah. done with school and he's trying to figure out what's going on and it's just yeah. covering his time um, over the summer. Yeah. And the summer just over it happens to be um, he gets sexually harassed by, some, by uh, someone who he ultimately gets into an affair with and yeah. then falls in love with the daughter. I yeah. don't know. It. Yeah. Young, young, young graduate is just trying to figure out what to do with his life and certain things like a, yeah. like a affair with a older woman, woman happens, yeah. which is quite a, quite an experience. And then ends up falling in love with the daughter of the woman she's having for her. So it gets just, it's a big it's tangled a mess. A but I remember you were watching we saw the trailer or something and you're like, Oh, that looks like a really cool part where they got married yeah. and then now they're kind of unsure yeah. or worried. And, you know, in this case, it's more he objects. She runs out of getting married with the other guy and then they get on a bus and then they're there. And, and you get, yeah, that, that is an interesting because it's one of those, it's an interesting scene because it's, 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 it is, uh, up to interpretation. It's one of those scenes. It's one of those movies, I think, where, uh, you could look at it as maybe they, after the adrenaline and they realize they're kind of safe for a bit because they're on the bus and they're, they, they escaped you know, the wedding and the family and everything. So then maybe they're just trying to kind of, you process. know, process everything that happened and, and try and like clear their head. Or, you know, maybe they're thinking, is that the right decision? Did, did that, did that make sense at all? Or, or did we just totally screw up? Yeah. Like, uh, what, what are we going to do now? Yeah. I don't know. I think you can, you could, you could probably look at it as, okay, you know, they, they both realize, yes, you know, we want to be with each other. But there's still, they kind of linger there. They leave it there where they're not just kind of smiling, looking at each other and, oh, we're going to live happily ever after. They're kind of... 
Yeah, I, I did. The, the ending was so sad for me, that mm-hmm. scene, because for both of them, it was just, it took such a heavy toll. This guy's just been accused of rape. The girl find, finds found out that the guy he loved was having an affair with his with her mm-hmm. mom. And then the and then at some point, things that the guy um, she loved yeah. raped her mom. Yeah. So, so yes. such an, an entire mess. Yeah. You know, so and lots of process. Yeah, so both of them have been going through a lot, you know, and there is, I think, for the, both of them, just that reconciling with the fact that okay, we have basically created fissures between ourselves yeah. and our family. Yeah. The comfort, the, yeah, the comforts that we are so used to yeah. that we've grown up in, those have changed. We now yeah. literally have to fend for ourselves. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good point. And so it's, I think that there's that two people that come from a very cushy, privileged uh, upbringing. I feel like both their families are probably going to disown them, and now they're going to have to completely go at it on their own. Yeah. And like you said, they're just not even like j- just entering adulthood, and now they're yeah. completely on their own. And it's, yeah. Okay. Well, what do we do now? Especially when you're starting out, having the support of your family to guide you through these changes is such a relieving, and you know, it gives you that security. Mm-hmm. And so now they don't have that security, and so. I think that there is that realization that they really truly have to figure out what to do. So I think that's 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 what happened. And I felt really sad about it because I felt like it wasn't their fault what mm-hmm. happened. Sometimes when you do have to make your own way from your parents, independently of your parents, especially when your parents don't agree with your choices, that does make it even harder, um, especially in the beginning. But mm-hmm. ultimately, I think anybody who does make their own decisions, even if they're wrong, yeah. But whenever you take agency yeah. of your own life, it yeah. is always a good thing. Always worth it. Yeah. Um, it's always worth it, no matter how hard it is at the beginning, no matter how many mistakes you make. But yeah. when, when you're starting, yeah. starting is always the hardest part. And these yeah. people are starting literally right at the beginning. And that's when the movie ends. And yeah. I think that captures the complexities of the feelings that, that they must have had in yeah. their heart yeah. in that moment, Definitely. especially after all that had happened. Yeah. 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 I don't know what else to say with that. No. That was a fair bit. Yeah. A good chunk. A good hunk. Yeah. Hunk of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. That's it. What'd you guys think of The Graduate? Have you seen it? Until next time. Till next time. That's a wrap. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap. Bye. <laughs>